Wheeland Presley Funeral Home and Crematory have been serving Quad City families and veterans since 1889. Wheeland Presley Funeral Homes are located in Rock Island, Milan, and Reynolds, and are proud supporters of WQPT. Alternatives is a proud supporter of WQPT and has been serving our community for 40 years. Alternatives provides professional guidance to maintain independence and quality of life for older adults and adults with disabilities. As Western Illinois University prepares for the end of the 2022-2023 school year, it prepares for the next year with new students and new challenges in the cities. As Western Illinois University prepares for the end of the 2022-2023 school year, it prepares for the next year with new students and new challenges in the cities. There are parents and there are kids that are deciding where to go even now for next year. Um, what's the Western selling point at this point? Western selling point is our academic programs and our strong quality of our academic programs on both campuses, Moline and Macomb. Uh, we have outstanding faculty, internationally known. I think that's first and foremost what mm -hmm. parents should consider. Uh, think about what programs their students are interested in and career exploration and the really outstanding support services that Western offers. And of course, tied to all of this is Western's affordability. Well, and, and for some kids, this is kind of late in the process. I mean, you're getting into late spring. I mean, a lot of times you want it already figured out like the year before, even in you know, September or October. What do you say to those people that are still trying to make a decision? I mean they got to act quickly. They do. They do. Uh, there's still time. Yeah. Uh, and many of many Western students have already decided and locked into Western Illinois University, but we still stu we still have students who are deciding, their parents are deciding, and uh, now's the time to think about uh, about college, the right fit for you. Still plenty of time to take those campus visits if you're deciding on next fall semester, and also a great time to get a head start if you're thinking about the following fall as well. We have talked a lot about enrollment figures for uh, Western, both Macomb and the Quad Cities, and we've seen a decline over the last number of years, 15 years. But your latest report that came out in February, spring to spring, freshman enrollment increased by just a little over 18%. Uh, new transfer students also increased by almost 19%. Those are big numbers. They are. We're, we're very happy with those numbers. I, I think what that says is that Western Illinois University is resonating with students on both of our campuses. Uh, they're exploring our programs. They like the flexibility of our programs. Uh, but ultimately, uh, they're connecting with the people of Western Illinois University. Uh, and when we see that happen, uh, that results in students deciding to come to campus. It's a welcoming campus, whether you're in Macomb or Moline. As you well know, I mean, there the, 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 the dark two years of no budget, uh, and it really impacted secondary education all across the state. And, and it was, it, you had this feeling like, then you get the pandemic after that, another body blow to institutions like Western. Um, do, you, do you think now it's almost that you're turning the corner and, and this is something that you can build on? Yes, uh, momentum is a wonderful thing. It when, is, once when you, it's positive. Right, right. When you make that, that turn, which I, I, th I would say we made that turn about a year and a half ago from uh, kind of those more challenging times uh, brought on by some budgetary uncertainty. Um, but we really have turned the corner. Uh, we have an outstanding university president in uh, President Guiyu Huang, as well as uh, a number of other university leaders, and also just the new leadership as well as continuity across our faculty, staff, uh, and our student population as well. Because we had seen a lot of Illinois kids going to colleges in Wisconsin or Iowa, maybe even Indiana and Missouri, I'm not sure about those, mm -hmm. but uh, that was the key is not only to bring in uh, out of state or international students, and we'll talk about that in a moment, but to keep the Illinois kids here. I mean, was that done through recruitment? Is that, is that something, because it's very competitive, I'm mm -hmm. telling you something you very well know. Right. Um, I mean, what was the key there? I, I think the key is making those personal connections with students, 
Uh, and we, through our admissions process, have really uh, created opportunities for students to interact with programs and faculty earlier so they mm -hmm. understand, you know, sure, you, you choose an institution, but why are you choosing it? And so to give students hands-on experiences much earlier, we connect with high school students much earlier and even junior high students to give them uh, on-campus experiences, hands-on experiences, chances to meet other students who are, go who are going to go to WIU. And that interactivity, I think, results in making a really personal connection with the university. There was some worry, especially when you had remote learning, um, is that you were losing that, uh, that one-on-one -on -one with professors or, or even students having the college experience, as they used to say, and that perhaps because of the price of, of higher education, that enjoying that college experience, is it worth the dollars and cents? Are you, are you seeing perhaps people going, yes, this is worth the, the, the money. Yes, this does help me grow in ways that, that you can't really quantify right now. Yes, I, it, it's a mix of both, and I, I would call that a balance. I, I, there are students who are interested in absolutely that immersed um, on-campus experience. Um, they think of it as, as social opportunities mixed with academic opportunities, uh, but also the student development that comes from being a college student from your first year until the time you graduate and how you change as a person. Uh, and then also, course format can offer flexibility to students of all ages. Uh, Western really emphasizes the importance of touching base on campus, uh, whether it's with a course or a person who's advising you through your college process. Uh, and um, also seeing the opportunity for students to access um, in meaningful ways uh, remote services and programs too. The working student, uh, for example, uh, appreciates that type of flexibility. Western also did expand a lot of the online offerings in the last year, did it not? I mean, it so, did. so it's not like you're turning your back on it because you can't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In many cases, uh, many of our programs are still offered on campus, but that online element adds another level of flexibility. So we'll have students who are 100% on campus perhaps 100% online, or some combination of both. And that has really allowed us to expand our student population. Well, as you know, about two years ago, is that people were questioning the viability of the Quad City campus and whether or not you know, it, it was worth it. And, and, and there was some interesting comments from, from uh, lawmakers in regards to uh, the Riverfront campus here in Moline. Was it a misunderstanding? Is, 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 is the understanding of what is going on here uh, uh, better understood? Is it, is, is, are, are you telegraphing the information better? I think so. I, I think the important thing to note is that Western has always been viable in the Quad Cities. Um, I've been at Western Illinois University for 25 years now working uh, at, at the Moline campus at different locations over the years. And we have grown uh, from uh, just around 300 students to three programs uh, to usually hovering around 1,000 students all the way up to 1,500 at our peak. And so we have, we've been viable over those, those years, expanding to over 29 academic programs offered uh, physically on site at the Quad Cities campus, and offering programs that meet the needs of, of our uh, region, our Quad Cities region, uh, and being responsive, uh, whether it's technology, business, education. Uh, WIU is con committed uh, to ensuring a, an educated workforce as well as ensuring that we're meeting the needs of our students who are interested in pursuing their degree right here in the Quad Cities. And touching upon perhaps one of the most important is engineering because that's what uh, Western Illinois Quad City campus really hung its hat on because let's be honest, y y y you were birthed in part by Deere and Company. I mean, uh, uh, 50 years ago this year, you took over the John Deere Elementary School in East Moline and, and, and we have seen this grow uh, every year. Tell me about the engineering program right now and the new offerings and new programs that, that we can see in the Quad Cities campus. The first thing to emphasize about uh, Western Illinois University's engineering program is that it's ABET accredited. Uh, that means it's a high quality program. Uh, that accreditation uh, is looked at by employers. Uh, it ensures the curriculum is meeting certain standards and make sure that uh, our faculty are evaluating students and making sure that they are effectively prepared for their careers. Uh, the additional programs that have been added, uh, we've had a general and a mechanical engineering uh, for several years, but now we also have electrical, 
and a few other engineering programs that will meet the needs of students. And, and it's all part of a growing STEM awareness and STEM education, mm -hmm. uh, which, which is really a core value also at Western, is it not? It is, yeah. STEM education, particularly uh, you know, establishing the identity of the Quad Cities campus. We've been fortunate to build these buildings over the years, and now we're identifying through a strategic plan uh, what goes in the boxes. Mm -hmm. And uh, STEM is a key part of that. Uh, we have recently uh, acquired two really important National Science Foundation grants. Uh, the first one is in support of engineering uh, in establishing a learning community for students. There are eight scholarships available uh, for students to apply for. Uh, that's four years uh, of, of, uh, of engineering uh, work for students. Uh, there will be classes in common, faculty mentoring, peer study, uh, and a learning community that is centered both on campus as well as on campus here uh, in the Quad Cities and our Macomb campuses. What have you noticed, I mean, as far as the interaction between Western and the business community? Because it really has been, in some cases, hand in hand. Uh, not that you're a technical school, mm -hmm. but that you're able to provide some of the important services that local employers need. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's about re being responsive. We have advisory councils for our engineering program as well as the campus and other programs as well. And so those, you know, the faculty uh, to industry uh, connections are really critical in those scenarios to so make sure that the curriculum reflects the current needs of uh, corporations, business, and industry. Uh, Western's committed to that and is always uh, receiving input as well as contributing expertise. We have really great faculty uh, as I said, who are nationally, sometimes internationally known in their fields, and for them to be able to contribute back to the expertise uh, that's, uh, that's needed in our community is the reason why WIU has a Quad Cities campus. And the Quad Cities campus is also trying to expand, at least in, in, in the liberal arts, um, and, uh, to, to become the full-fledged, you know, uh, not only the, the, the math person, but also the musician. Mm -hmm. um, you must be somewhat proud of, of expansions in that area at the Quad City campus. We are. A, a, a whole education is really important for critical thinking development, um, ensuring that students have a broad world view and uh, you know, can be responsive uh, to issues of social justice, um, the economy, climate change, all of these issues, uh, and our general education curriculum, uh, as well as the liberal arts and sciences, contributes to the student ability uh, to be a contributing citizen uh, in our communities and beyond. Western Quad City Campus also was starting to do more as far as uh, child care and early childhood development is concerned. Uh, you're trying to fit that need that is growing of the fact that people need daycare, people need qualified people to look after their children. How is the program progressing right now um, to meet that niche that is so vital right now for for employers and employees. I'm so glad you mentioned this. Our, our early learning center initiatives are really illustrative of uh, Western Illinois University's holistic commitment to meeting the needs of our community. And so um, start to finish thinking about, first of all, um, the community need, such a huge need for early learning uh, and child care in our community. There, there's a huge shortage, uh, not just here in our community, but nationally. And uh, Western is, is poised to address some of that need through development of a new bilingual early learning center uh, led by Dr. Lindsay Meeker, uh, who is um, a partner to many in the community. And uh, we're very excited about our upcoming early learning center. We're, we're hopefully going to sign a lease here within the week uh, with a new community partner for a location uh, just off of the downtown area. Very appreciative of support of our community leaders like Mayor Sangeetha Rayaputty and others uh, who have really facilitated these conversations. Um, the, the great thing about the Early Learning Center, it meets the needs of our community. Um, it continues that idea of educational quality, even for the youngest people in our community, and creates a dual language learning atmosphere for our students as well, for the, the young children who participate. Uh, we've recently uh, hired a uh, family empowerment specialist, uh, thanks to the support of the Community Foundation. And the other really great aspect of this is it's led by our Western Illinois University faculty and staff, and then creates a hands-on opportunity for our uh, future teacher educators 
uh, who participate in the Early Learning Center as well. well. I mean, this is a launching pad. Uh, what do you hope to see this program develop into, and what kind of an impact do you think it is going to have in the community? It will have immediate impact. We'll be able to serve 125 young people uh, and their families uh, through our initial opening of the center. Uh, Long-term impact, uh, we, want to, uh, we want to get the space off and running. Uh, but ultimately, we can see the opportunity to find other possibilities uh, to further expand our early learning uh, beyond that. In addition, I mentioned that expertise of faculty early. Um, we're very fortunate, as I said, to have Dr. Meeker. She serves on the National Peer Learning Community. So this initiative is both uh, valued locally for meeting a need, but it's also serving as a template for others to replicate across the state and beyond. Others being other public institutions or? Yeah, other public institutions, other entities that are zeroed in on what are good practices for early learning. They're all, uh, they're all taking notes and uh, we're learning from them as well. Let's talk about uh, the students that do attend uh, Western because for a long time, and it's a continuing effort at the Quad City campus, is to make sure that uh, non-traditional students, which made up a large population of the student body uh, at Western, as well as the veteran population with a number of programs to make sure that uh, uh, veterans got education that they needed to advance their careers. Those are two commitments that this Western campus has really embraced. We have, and I think what it comes down to is that uh, the WIU Quad Cities campus, those are student groups we tend to attract. And the reason we attract those student groups is that flexibility in courses and programs. Yeah. It's also about the learning environment that students come to. Uh, it's welcoming, inclusive, and it's interesting because we have such a diverse student population, um, demographics, uh, individual background, identity, uh, and so it really is an opportunity for each student to come and pursue their interests and goals and feel like, regardless of where they come from, um, academics is the focus. The other great thing about, about the WIU Quad Cities campus is that it is a community-centered campus. And so a student will have experiences in the classroom, they'll have experiences on campus, and we also try to facilitate those connections that they make in the community for educational opportunities, hands-on opportunities like internships and experiential learning, and also for social and cultural opportunities as well. The Quad Cities is a great, great place to live. You have got the uh, governor giving his budget priorities, and, he, and he's talking about uh, mm -hmm. uh, post-secondary uh, uh, education. You, you, you've got, as you said, the, the, the new president, who's not so new anymore, right. with, with his initiatives. What are the marching orders right now for the Western campus in the Quad Cities? I mean, wh what are the biggest priorities uh, going into uh, 2023, 2024? Well, of course we wanna continue to promote the opportunities that Western offers to prospective students. And so with that comes growth, uh, meaningful growth. We want students to connect with Western, its programs and its people. Uh, so that growth is certainly a priority. Uh, retention of students, of course, is a huge priority. Uh, that can be a challenge, uh, particularly post-pandemic. Uh, re retention can be a challenge for institutions across the country. And so we want to make sure that we're offering the support services that students need to be successful, as well as the opportunities that, uh, that drive them, that inspire them, uh, and ultimately create their success as graduates of Western Illinois University. And finally, we want to be a good partner. Uh, to our community and to our region. Uh, we want to be responsive. Uh, we want to contribute to that idea of an educated workforce because we know ultimately through educated graduates and their contributions to our community, through those partnerships, we're helping to hopefully contribute to the quality of life in the area. Retention is so difficult. I mean, mm -hmm. it, and, and we're, we're talking about human beings, so it's right. not one size fits all. But what is the key to keeping a student all the way to the degree. Having those touch points with the student, um, establishing meaningful connections with them, a lot of that happens with our faculty who are so dedicated. Um, the, the great thing about a smaller campus uh, like WIU Quad City, a smaller university, mid-sized university like the Macomb campus, is the opportunity for that one-to-one -one interaction. And students get to know faculty, the faculty get to know them, they know their dreams, they know their challenges along the way and they can help provide them resources as well as the uh, 
you know, the, the resources they need both to address challenges, but then also to uh, aspire and achieve their goals. As you know, a four-year degree isn't for everybody. But, but do you still think that it's vitally important for, for so many? 100%. I, the the four-year degree uh, for so many people is an opportunity to develop as a person. It's an opportunity to learn a field, uh, not just learn the field, not just learn skills, but also how to be creative um, and how to be innovative. Those are things that you know maybe aren't uniquely four-year degree, but they're definitely part of a university four-year experience. Dr. Christy Mindra the Western Illinois University Vice President in charge of Quad City Operations. Well, April is filled with some great events that will let you pull winter behind you. Here's Laura Adams with ideas that get you out and about. This is out and about for March 31st through April 6th. It's time for some spring fun. Lincoln Park is the site for a spring Easter egg hunt April 1st from 9 to 10, while Browning Field is the location for an Easter egg hunt on the 1st from 11.30 to 12.30. The 12th annual Davenport Model Railroad and Memorabilia Show takes place April 1st at the Mississippi Valley Fairgrounds at 9.30. The Blackhawk Fire Department hosts a pancake breakfast on 3rd Street in Milan on the 2nd. And it's time for the 25th annual QC In Fisherman Swap Meet at the QCCA Expo Center the 1st from 8 to noon. On stage, Grumpy Old Men, the musical continues at Circa 21. And for kids, Junie B's Essential Survival Guide to School. Witness for the Prosecution by Agatha Christie finishes their run at Playcrafters Barn Theater this week, while the musical Rent closes their run at Quad City Music Guild. The Songbag Concert Series features Jolo Russo at the Carl Sandburg State Historic Site in Galesburg on the 2nd at 2 and 4. For King & Country takes over the stage at the Vibrant Arena the 6th. Live from the QC, it's Saturday night with guest James Murray performing at Rhythm City as a fundraiser for Gilda's Club on the 1st. GIT Improv are back providing the ha-ha to the Black Box Theater on April 1st at 7.30. For more information, visit WQPT.org. Thank you, Laura. Electric Larry has been part of the city's music scene for decades, a lover of blues and country music. We caught up with him at Moline's Black Box Theater where he played one of his originals. Here's Electric Larry with I'm Still Here Hurting. I'm sitting hurting over you I'm sitting here hurting over you I'm sitting here don't know what to do I'm sitting here looking at the wall I'm sitting here Looking at the wall I'm sitting here Wondering what went wrong I'm sitting here Wishing you were home I'm sitting here Wishing you were home I'm sitting here Wondering what went wrong I'm sitting here crying over you I'm sitting here crying over you I'm sitting here don't know what to do But darling, I know I love you But darling, I know I love you, but darling, I can't go on without you. I'm sick, hurting over. 
I'm sitting here looking at the wall. I'm sitting here wishing you were home. I'm sitting here crying over you. But darling, I know I love you. But darling, can't go on without you. But darling, I know I love you. But darling. Electric Larry with I'm Still Here Hurting, performed at Moline's Black Box Theater. On the air, on the radio, on the web, on your mobile device, and streaming on your computer. Thanks for taking some time to join us as we talk about the issues on the cities. Wheeland Presley Funeral Home and Crematory have been serving Quad City families and veterans since 1889. Wheeland Presley Funeral Homes are located in Rock Island, Milan, and Reynolds, and are proud supporters of WQPT. Alternatives is a proud supporter of WQPT and has been serving our community for 40 years. Alternatives provides professional guidance to maintain independence and quality of life for older adults and adults with disabilities.